It's very interesting to me the way the book starts because I think it, it reveals where you want to go with it. It starts this way. Immigrants established it. Pioneers expanded it. And capitalists spread its influence across the world. It made the West wild, the 20s roar, and rock and, and rock music roll. George Washington was one of its founding fathers. F. Scott Fitzgerald, its poet laureate. Hank Williams, its cowboy bard. Rebellions were fought to free it. The Native Americans were brought low by it. Religious zealots crusaded against it. And come Thanksgiving at the in-laws, millions whisper its praises. The answer to this befuddling historical riddle, if you guess the United States of America, you're by no means wrong, you write, although for our purposes, American whiskey works just as well. So there is, in, in your mind, a, a kind of a confluence of the, the history of bourbon whiskey and the history of the country. Oh, most definitely. And I think that really became apparent when I first started researching the book, because I liked the idea. You know, I knew about pioneers and cowboys and bootleggers and what have you, and it sounded like there was a good story there. Mm -hmm. But in, in doing the research and realizing all these things that that alcohol was fa was first made from corn by colonists in Jamestown when our country was, was getting up off the ground. That George Washington wasn't just a founding father of the nation, but also of, of our whiskey. Or that in Prohibition, it fueled the Jazz Age and the Lost Generation. And in World War II, the bourbon industry set aside whiskey making to make industrial alcohol for the war effort to help us win. I mean, all these things, it was just uncanny. And that's when, when it occurred to me, and I knew I definitely wanted to do the book, that bourbon wasn't just a byproduct of the American experience. It, it actually was the American experience, and that you could tell a, a pretty compelling version of our history through bourbon whiskey.